Welcome to the Common Man Football Show. My name is James Coburn, and today's episode, we're talking about the 2018 NFL Draft Class, specifically production analytics relating to Alabama's defensive tackle, Deron Payne. Uh, now, if you are new to the channel and you're new to data and other sort of stuff like that, all terms and definitions will be in the description. Uh, but there's one main term that you should really know for this video, which is defensive market share. Defensive market share is simply this. You take an individual defensive statistic and you divide it by the team total. So for example, if a defensive tackle has one sack on a team that has 10 sacks and that defensive tackle had 10% sack market share. But what you do with that number is you take that number and you compare it to every single defensive tackle performance since the 1989 NFL draft class. And then boom, you have a way of comparing how one player compared production wise to another player. To, and, and by that other player, meaning a guy that had multiple all pro considerations in their career, multiple pro bowl considerations in their career, or just a long term starting court, uh, defensive tackle in general in their career. So getting into Deron Payne's profile, not the best profile imaginable. Uh, Deron Payne has a 61.09 solo tackle mark share score, a 16.15 sack market share score, and a 11.67 tackle for loss market share score. Now I understand a lot of you guys are going to say, well, Jim, he's a nose tackle. Nose tackles don't produce. But you have to keep in mind that all pro potential and pro bowl potential is talking about all pro nose tackles. It's talking about guys like Vince Wolfork, Holote Nata, like Casey Hampton. It's talking about those types of nose tackles, Damon Harrison. All those guys, all those high end nose tackle types produced really high in terms of solo tackle data, sack data, and TFL data in terms from, from market share perspective. So I don't really want to hear people giving me grief about this because, like, I'm sorry. It, it just is what it is. Like, you have to hit these thresholds to be a high quality nose tackle type. And when you don't, it just makes you look bad. And just to give an example, the guy that, that Jerome Payne really looks like the most is Abreu Franklin. Um, he was a nose tackle uh, who came out of uh, Tennessee. Uh, very similar profile. Now, Payne is a little bit better, you know, because Payne has better sack market share and better TFL market share. But you can see similarities in terms of Abreu Franklin being a guy that really only got solo tackles more so than sacks or TFL. Let alone the fact that Jerome Payne has been compared to Nadama Kinsu. And this is Nadama Kinsu's uh, production profile in terms of solo tackle data, sack data, and TFL data. And I don't really need to bring up Jerome Payne's data again, but you get the picture. Um, the bottom line is, Deron Payne definitely is a guy that could become a long-term starting nose tackle in the vein of a Abreu Franklin. But if you are drafting Deron Payne, thinking that you're going to get Ndamukong Kinsu, thinking that you're going to get this franchise-changing uh, player for your franchise, that just doesn't look to be the case based on data. So I don't always like to be the bearer of bad news in these videos or to try to dampen another player, but I'm just giving you the facts. The fact is... Deron Payne may very well be a first-round defensive tackle prospect, but should he be a first-round defensive tackle prospect? And based on data, very unlikely, no. There's much better value. There's much better players out there that could give you a lot more value and give you a lot more production. Uh, and ultimately, that is that just is what it is. So again, as much as Deron Payne is getting a lot of hype and getting a lot of praise and all this other sort of stuff, even as a nose tackle type, he doesn't really compare to Vince Wolfirk. He doesn't compare to Hulo Tenata. He doesn't compare to Marcel, De uh, Marcel Darius. He doesn't compare to any of those guys when it comes from a market share perspective. So, again, I, I do understand the different dynamics of being a nose tackle. But in this particular case, Deron Payne is just not meeting the thresholds he needs to hit. Even for a nose tackle, he's not hitting the thresholds he needs to hit from a production standpoint. Um, and of course, uh, my name is James Coburn. You can find my other work at draftcoburn.wordpress.com. You can also follow me on Twitter at Geometrics. And if you like this content and you want more content like this, be sure to leave a like and subscribe. Uh, share this video as well with anybody that you know. Hit that notification button so that you're always reminded when another video of mine drops. And I'll talk to you guys in the next video. Peace.